two, one. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. Even you. Especially you. You know, if you know me, one of the things that I love to do, especially living in New York City, is I love to take walks in nature. And I love to take walks in nature because it's really important for me to be in touch with the trees, to feel the energy of the earth, to feel the energy of the greenness and the lushness around me because it humbles me and it reminds me how small I am. But it also reminds me how powerful I am and that I am part of something really amazing. I'm part of something really great, something really big. And it humbles me to know that because it reminds me of my power. You know, if you think about trees, for example, trees are still. Nature is still. Nature is quiet, right? And, and living in a city, growing up in a city, there's so many distractions that you can forget that Real life, real stillness is exemplified in nature. And that's really, at the core of our beings, how we're supposed to function. So when I go to the park, I feel so much energy, so much power, so much connection that it grounds me. And the other day, I was leaving the park with my dog because my dog, I take her on walks with me all the time. And often when I leave the park, I get messages. And the messages that I get uh, come from the universe. You know, they come from the, in the form of uh, people saying something as they walk by me, mostly. <laughs> and, or something that I see. But in this message that I received, there were these two little boys. And it often comes from children, which is interesting, right? Because... As adults, we think of children as these cute beings, but children have a lot of wisdom. Children know a lot. And I say that because children are jade, not jaded yet from the world. They have a perspective on an understanding of the world that is so amazing because they haven't been influenced yet by all of these things that we have been influenced in as we've grown older and older. So I'm walking out of the park and there are these two little boys and you know when you're meant to hear something, this is something I truly believe, when you're meant to hear a message, it doesn't matter where you are or how loud it is or how many people are around you, you will hear a message. I believe that what is meant for you shall not pass you. If you've heard that saying before, I truly believe that. And so these two little boys are walking towards me. I can't really hear the beginning of their conversation, but when they get right into my earshot, one of the little boys says to the other boy, and he's like looking up and looking around at the trees, and he says, why? Are there trees? Very simple question. Why are there trees? And the other boy turns to him very matter-of-factly and he says, for air. <laughs> and the way he said it, it's like, for air, duh. And they keep talking and they pass me. But in that moment, I had this eureka moment. I had this moment of, wow. You know, because often in stillness, we get a lot of answers. I had this moment, and a message said to me in that moment, everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose, even you, especially you. Trees, right? Just like that little boy matter-of-factly said, trees have a purpose right? Their purpose is to help in the ecosystem so that we as humans can breathe and they in turn can grow. 
right? This whole process of photosynthesis proves that trees have a major purpose in our ecosystem. We've seen from you know deforestation and the way that people have treated the environment how vital trees are to our ecosystem. And you know, trees, they're not over here and over there and like, you know what? I don't want to be a tree no more. I want to go over here and I want to move over here and I want to look up here and I want to move and I want to change. Trees stand firmly in their purpose, right? You see trees that are super tall and it's because they've been on this earth for hundreds of years, right? They build their roots firmly in the ground so deep that their purpose and their strength is unshakable. They build their branches so tall, so green, so lush that they touch the sky, right? When you look at a tree, you feel like, wow, in awe because of its power. But a tree's power, its purpose, is in its stillness. And when we think of the word purpose, that could be a really overwhelming word for a lot of us, right? Because, like, when you think of the word purpose, it's like your whole life you're trying to figure out what your purpose is. <laughs> you know, people ask you as a kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do when you grow up? When you're in, in, in school, right, people say, what do you want to do for your career? When you're in college, what do you want to major in? When you're in graduate school, what do you want to focus on? What do you want to study? And so essentially, as human beings, we spend our entire lives <laughs> trying to figure out who we are, trying to figure out our purpose, trying to seek out trying to find, trying to discover, trying to uncover, trying to unpack what our purpose is. And that is the problem right there, is that we have spent and we have learned somehow that we have to find and seek out our purpose instead of realizing that our purpose is already right here inside of us, right? There's that saying that everything that you need is already inside of you. I was looking up the etymology of the word purpose because you know I'm obsessed with breaking things down and analyzing things and I looked up the etymology of the word purpose. And the first known um, usage of the word purpose was in the Anglo-French in the 1300s, right? And it meant aim, intention. A purpose is an aim or intention. And the word per, right, comes from the Latin root pro, which means to put forth. I also looked up, you know, the, the meaning of, of purpose, and I found that purpose also originally meant by design, right? On purpose means by design. So if you think about that, if you think about the fact that on purpose means by design, you were made on purpose by design. You were made, you were designed, right? intentionally there's there's no reason for you to be constantly searching for who you are because you were meant to be just the way you are you were designed on purpose because on purpose means by design so think about that for a moment let that sink in for you for a moment and let's think about trees again for a moment Think about nature, about plants, because there's so much for us to learn in nature, you know. In our world, in our reality, there are so many distractions. There are so many loud noises. There's so many uh, bings and, and whistles and um, 
uh, alerts and alarms and all of these things are distractions. And you know what distractions do? They pull you away from the ability to be still. They pull you away from your ability to listen. Everything you need is already inside of you. And the interesting or complicated thing about what we learn <laughs> is we learn to do everything outside of ourselves the older that we get and we forget to look within ourselves, right? We look for a career to define who we are instead of looking within at what we're already doing, how we already exist and allow that to define what our career is. Allow that to define what our purpose is already. A tree is not trying to be everywhere, trying to seek and find its purpose. A tree knows. I'm going to stand right here and I'm going to plant my roots and I'm going to grow as tall as I want to grow, honey. And I'm going to give life. I'm going to give air. I'm going to help people breathe. I'm going to help nature continue to thrive. And that's my purpose. And what do we do? We're running everywhere, trying to figure out what we're supposed to do. We're looking on Instagram, we're looking on Facebook, we're looking on uh, job websites, we're looking, <laughs> we're looking to our family to tell us what we're supposed to be doing with our lives, but we're not listening to ourselves, though. I was watching this really powerful interview from this monk um, that I really love and his name is Danda Pani and he was interviewed on London Real and he said something that really stuck with me. He was talking about reincarnation and past lives and he was saying that from the age of about like when you're born to maybe four years old as a little child you already have a sense of who you are. You already have an understanding of your purpose. And many children will already, from the age of whenever they start to talk, so maybe like one or one and a half, they will talk, if you're really listening as a parent, about their past lives, about who they used to be, who they are, what kinds of things they are interested in doing. And of course, they're kids, so it may sound jumbled or it may be not as easy to comprehend. But as children, he, he was saying, we already know who we are. We already have a strong foundation of who we are. And as parents, sometimes when we hear our children, I'm not a parent, but Sometimes when parents hear children talking, you know, it's normal to say, what are you talking about, baby? That's nonsense. What are you talking about? Huh? And we start to suppress what children are saying instead of listen to what they're saying. Because when we listen to what they're saying, we can get some sort of inkling of their purpose, right? And... After four years old, he made the argument that you start to forget, right, that past life. You start to lose sight of your purpose because you are influenced by the society, influenced by all sorts of distractions, influenced by your school, by things that you see, by things that you interact with. And so that purpose that you would talk about as a child starts to fade away. But he challenged listeners to ask their parents what they were like around four years old and younger, what they talked about. So, of course, you know me. I called up my mom. I actually texted her. <laughs> and I said, Mom, do you remember what I was like when I was four and younger? Like, what kinds of things I talked about and what I used to do? And she said to me, let me think about it. And at first I was like, I mean, I'm your only child. Like, what do you need to think about, you know? But then I remembered, like, I'm almost 34 years old and that was 30 years ago. So, I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> but I, 
I saw her in person a couple of days later and I asked her again about the question. I said, what was I like when I was around four years old or younger? Do you remember? And she told me this story and the universe always has a purpose, right? She told me this story that I realized when she started to tell it to me that she had been telling me for my whole life. And in this story, it summed up everything that I am. <laughs> and it was apparent when I was little. And it's so funny because she had been telling me, because I recognized the story right away, she had been telling me this story my whole life, and I had been hearing it, but I didn't put two and two together because I was out here trying to find my purpose over here and over there and over there and over here and up here and down here and in the corner and over there. That I wasn't listening to the messages that the universe was trying to deliver to me through my mom. I'm going to say that again. I was too busy over here and over there and under here and in the corner and over there and up here and up trying to climb a tree and trying to find a job and this and that, that I wasn't listening to the messages. I wasn't able to be still and sit still long enough to hear the truth. Every one of us has a voice right here in your diaphragm, right here in this area, in your chest, in your diaphragm area, that if you're still enough, you hear messages, right? You know when you have that feeling and it says, yes, go do this, whether you listen or not, that's up to you, but you know that feeling that you have when it says, go do that. Go for that. You want that. That's something you need to do. Where does that voice come from? Where does that voice come from? That voice is your inner voice, your inner guide. But only when we are still are we able to hear that voice. And you know, in this, this story with my mom, the interesting thing is, at the same time when I had texted her and I had asked her, oh, do, 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 you, know, do you remember what I was like as a child, right? My phone also stopped working. This is the second time my phone stopped working. My phone stopped working. And we had to have a face-to-face -face conversation, not a text conversation or on the phone. I had to go see her. I had to be present. I had to be still, not distracted by anyone, anything, in order to hear the message. So when I did see my mom and I asked her what I was like as a little kid, she told me this story that I was very familiar with. And she said, well, one thing I remember about you is when you were two years old, we were sitting on the bus and we were having a conversation and you were talking and talking because you were a talker. She said, I was a talker and I'll call it a speaker. <laughs> but she said, you were always a talker and you started talking from a very young age, maybe one and a half, two years old. And she said, when, you're two years, when you were two years old, we were sitting on the bus going somewhere and this older man who was sitting a little further back than where we were sitting got up from his seat and came over to us. And she said he had a look on his face of surprise or astonishment or fascination. Like he was drawn to my voice. And he looked at me and he looked at my mom and she said that he said, how old is this child? How old is this child? And she's She's talking and she really has something to say, huh? And he said that to my mom and she said, yeah, she's been talking for a long time. And you know, that was a simple story. That was a story that I had heard from my mom growing up. 
because she told other people this story about me all the time. But I had never heard it like I heard it that day because I wasn't listening until that moment where I had to face her face to face and really listen. I had to be still like a tree so that I could receive my messages. And it reflected once again in that moment that everything has a purpose. Even you, even me, and our purpose is inside of us all along. And if we listen and we allow ourselves to really reflect and sit in it, we can start to come to terms with what our purpose is. And it's not about running and seeking to find our purpose. It's about being still enough to hear your purpose. Did you hear that? I'm going to say it again. It's not about running and seeking to find our purpose. It's about being still enough to find and listen and hear inside of you to hear your purpose. And when she said that about me, that I had always been a talker and that this man came up and he was drawn to my voice, it clicked. I was like, oh. you know, Raven Simone, when she has those moments and that's so Raven and she's like, oh, and she sees everything clearly. That's how I felt in that moment. I felt like, wow, it's all aligning. It all makes sense. I get it now. From a very young age, I had been invited by my church to be a speaker, to be a reader, right? To read. Uh, from the Bible. And then when I was in middle school and high school, I started doing spoken word poetry competitions all around the city and I made it to the semifinals. I read poetry in my talent show at my high school. And then I became, in my college years, I was invited to become a teacher. I was nominated to go to this program to become a teacher. And then I was a teacher for four years. And now I'm here speaking to you. And in that moment, it all aligned and it all clicked. And I was like, oh my God, duh. I realized that I, my purpose by design I'm meant to be a speaker. It's something I do naturally. It's something I just love to do. So today I'm going to challenge you to spend some time reflecting. And when I say reflecting, I mean sitting still. If you can go out into nature, I always recommend go out into nature, honey, and sit. We need to sit under a tree or just focus and look at a tree, look at plants, look at leaves. Do whatever it is that you need to do. But I encourage you today to sit in stillness. Sit in stillness today and allow yourself to listen. Allow yourself to listen to the messages that are coming to you from within. And you know the powerful thing about the voice that you have within you? The powerful thing about that voice is that you can ask yourself questions. You can actually ask yourself questions. And you can say to yourself, what is my purpose? And sometimes it's not going to come to you right away because we have all these distractions in our heads. But I challenge you, I encourage you to sit with it for a moment and allow yourself to feel the stillness and allow whatever messages that are coming up, allow them to come up and listen to them. Sometimes you might get a word, sometimes you might get uh, a reference to something that you saw, a person's name. Listen to those messages because you know, for the universe, it, it's not about making sense to you because the universe already knows. But it's about you listening. 
And when you feel it, taking action. So if you get a message, listen to that message. If you get a word, explore that word. We are already equipped, honey. We are already equipped with everything that we need. It's not about seeking and searching and finding. It's about listening and sitting and stillness and peace and the ability for you yourself to believe enough in your design, right? Because you were designed on purpose, right? By design, the original meaning of purpose. You have everything you need. So today, listen, practice listening. You can ask yourself questions and listen. You know, you don't have to sit with your eyes closed and meditate if that's not your thing, but you can practice stillness. You can practice having quiet time. You can practice going out in nature and changing up your environment where you feel peaceful. That's when your purpose comes. That's when you receive messages. Your purpose is something you naturally do. It's something that thrives inside of you. It's something that's a hunger, something that you just want to do, that you just love to do, that you've always done as a kid. Let it tell you what it is. Let it piece together and align with you. Everything has a purpose, even you especially you. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for listening. And if you like topics like this, go ahead and check out my podcast, Letters from Mars, where I talk about a lot of other things just like this. This is my birthday challenge to myself where I'm trying to do as many live videos as possible until my 34th birthday. So I appreciate you for listening. Have a beautiful, amazing day. Bye.